Hey, in this video, we're going to look at the Wilcox and signed rank test defined as the number of positive Walsh averages. And we'll explain that. Um, this is going to help us find the, the mean and the variance of the Wilcox and, Ryan, Wilcox and signed rank test for any distribution that we assume. And uh, let's just start. So the, as a reminder that we're in a one sample location problem. Uh, we have a random sample, identic, independent, identically distributed, random variable with symmetric density. Um, and we might add that it's absolutely continuous and has a unique median. Um, the hypothesis that we test is the median is zero versus that it's greater. And um, the Test statistic is the sum of the ranks of positive sampled items among the absolute values. And so let's explain what that is. I have a couple videos on the signed rank distribution, which may also be helpful in this case. But here we have a random sample, and then we order them. And then the number in parentheses means that they're ordered somehow. So here's the smallest value, the second, the teeth smallest zero and then we have the positive values in uh, um, now this order you know is is sort order but it doesn't mean that's the order that the data came in the x sub one the first observation we took could could be any one of these and and x2 could be any one of these they come in in different orders and then once we grab all our data, then we sort them. And that's what is shown here. So to calculate the, the signed rank <coughs> test, what we do is we take the absolute value of each of these, and then we put those absolute values in order. <coughs> and so an absolute value is a distance from zero in this case. So these numbers here are gonna have smaller absolute values, you know, than these out here. Um, and that'll come into play in a minute also. So then we rank them. So one, two, and then all the way to N. <coughs> and then we add the ranks where the original data is associated with the positives. And that's the Wilcox and signed rank test. Okay. So if we can think of it like this, that if we create a little function it's called a, a sign function that if if the the uh, function value is positive then it generates a one if it's negative and then it generates a zero and so then the test statistic the sign rank test statistic can be thought of as this that the rank associated with the x value is what we have here and we add them all up so these ranks r j goes from one to n and, and each one of those is associated with an original x value if the original x value is positive then we keep the rank and we add it and we add up only the positive ranks okay and we'll go through a quick example of that the walsh averages is if we have our data one to n and we take the uh, n, n plus 1 over 2 averages. So we, you know, we take this average, you know, 1 with 2 and then 1 with 3 and then 1 with 4 and then 1, you know, 1 with n. And then we start here. Now we don't take two, the average of 2 and 1 because that's the same as 1 and 2. So we start here and then we take the averages with everything else. And then we start at 3 and take the averages. And you represent that mathematically like this. This is for all i less than or equal to j. And that way we don't get repeat values of, you know, of a 1 and a 2 and a 2 and a 1. Okay. So the new definition of the signed rank test is going to be this. T, which we defined here, and on the back page is the, the sum of the positive values, the ranks of the positive values, is this. It's the number of Walsh averages that are positive, and that's for i less than or equal to j. That, these are exactly the same. So here's a quick example. Let's just run through this. So if this is our data, and then, um, and I have them in sort order, 
we take the absolute value of each of them and then we rank them. And so this is the smallest and this and that and this, that and that. So then we rank them one through six. And then our test statistic is the ranks associated with the positive. So there's a one, a four, and a six. So our test statistic is 11. And that's how you calculate the sign rank test. But now let's do it with the Walsh averages. So if, if here are our values, we're going to take the Walsh averages like this. We're going to take 4 and 6, 1 and 6, 9 is 2 and 6, all against 6. And then we're going to take 4 and 1 and 2 and then, and then 1. And, you know, we're going to take the Walsh averages like that. And so I'm going to run out of real estate for my camera here. But this column represents, you know, think about the sixes first. So then we take six, that the Walsh average of six and six, which is six. And then six and four is 10 divided by two is five. And six and one is seven divided by two is 3.5. Six and minus two is four divided by two. And then we, and uh, six and minus three is three divided by two is 1.5. Six and minus five is one divided by two is 0.5. Now, how many of these are positive? There's six of them, okay? And then we do that for this one. We take four and find the Walsh average for the, against the rest of them. And um, then that, these are the values. There's one, two, three, four. There's four positive. And then we take the one and find the Walsh averages. There's one positive. And we then we just then we're starting here and taking the Walsh average of these. But of course they're all going to be negative. We get these are zero. Take then zero zero. So if we add up these, we get eleven, which is the same as we got before. Okay. So what what's happening here? So let's go to example two. Is if this is a number line, and then we put our data, so x1, x2, x3, kind of, and then we put a little tick for where the x's lie. If we look at um, any one of these positive x's, then we draw a circle with this radius, and pardon my circle there. If we take the Walsh averages of everything below it, only the values in this circle are going to be positive because this value, an absolute value, is bigger than all of these. And so the number of these, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that is actually equivalent to if we were to take the absolute value of these and rank them. This is going to be the smallest, and that's the second, and that's the third and the fourth, and the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth. Well, and, and if we take the Walsh average of this with all the rest below it, there's going to be eight positive Walsh averages. So in a, they're, they're equivalent. If we take the uh, absolute value, the rank of the absolute values, and then associate with the positive outcome, that's the same as the number of positive Walsh averages. Well, hopefully that made sense to you. If you go through it a couple times, you'll get a little better understanding of it. But that's what I have today. Um, the next video, we're going to look at um, the distributional properties of the test statistics. So what's the mean of this and the variance of this um, when, uh, you know, when we you know, when we have to know the underlying distribution of the axis. So should be an interesting one. So if you liked it, please like it. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.